Hey there, everybody. I'm back here with one of my agent partner spotlights. Uh, I love interviewing my agent partners all over the country so that you get to know them in case you're looking to buy, sell, invest, move to, start your real estate career, whatever the case may be in the area that they live. Um, but as I've shared with you guys in uh, on it, all honesty, I just really am fortunate about the people that I get to work with and all the friendships or relationships that I've made uh, because I don't have any geographical borders. My business partners are all over and that's the really cool thing about what I get to do. So today I am with Bill Beck out of Branson, Missouri. And Bill actually is a short-term rental investor agent specialist. And so he actually has a tremendous amount of knowledge about uh, short-term rental markets across the country, not just in Branson. And I'll let him talk a little bit about that with us. But before we get to it, Bill, what I like to talk about first is just a little bit about you personally, because I believe people work with people they know, like, and trust. And I know you're super likable and trustworthy, but my people don't know. So share a little bit about yourself and then we'll get into the business side, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, 30 second background, a uh, bit yeah. of a nomad, grew, moved all over the Midwest growing up and found myself, you know, at a company that worked with vacation rentals as a consultant, helping people basically buy vacation rentals all over the country because, you know, vacations are cool. So never thought I'd be a real estate agent. I was like, that's just not who I am. I'm not like that person on HGTV. Like, that's just never going to be me. Yeah. And then next thing I know, I'm like helping agents do these transactions and I'm doing more work than they are doing. And I'm like, I think I might be good at this slash, or maybe I should do this. And then it became, it was just a seamless transition into a, I mean, a primarily buyer's agent. So I, I definitely work with a lot of people that are trying to get their first or build their portfolio of these. And now I've done it myself. So I've gotten my first one, I've gotten a second one, and now I'm building a third. So it's, it's, it's great to be hanging out with these people because you see the practices for, you know, how to build wealth and, and how to live a better life. And it's amazing to be able to do this. And I'm just so fortunate and happy to be here. Yeah. And so you're, that's a great segue into, um, you've lived all over and then you got to learn about markets, uh, in the vacation rental space all over the country. So you're just really well-versed, I think, when it comes to just knowing great markets, which makes you, um, really valuable as a realtor, especially for somebody who might be watching that's thinking about investing and they're okay investing across the country, not just where they live, which that's why it's called vacation rental. You guys, one of the best things to do is go buy somewhere you want to visit often, right? Because you can rent it out when you're not there. And obviously, Obviously save money when you go there and visit. Um, so, uh, so I think that's really cool. And that's something that you bring to the industry, um, Bill, that a lot of people don't have. But also what I love about you is that you are an investor. So not only are you an investor agent, you're an investor yourself. And I think that creates a tremendous amount of credibility. There's a lot of agents that haven't invested themselves. And it's hard to be credible to an investor when you haven't. And so that has been something really cool to watch. So just in a couple of years time, you've got three properties already, or your third one coming. Um, and you've worked with hundreds of investors, right? Yes. So not only do you service investors in the Branson area, but you also connect investors with your agent partners throughout the country. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, having, again, worked as a consultant, helping people buy these vacation rental properties all over, yeah. um, you know, finding the markets that are the right fit, right? Yeah. Because there are a couple of core markets where it's like, you know, fundamentals are a lot of people go there throughout the course of the year because it's really hard to make money with these if you only have a seasonal market where people are right. only going three, four months a year. So mm -hmm. it's like knowing the fundamentals, knowing the restrictions. I mean, that's huge. Like those yeah. things right there. It's like you can carve out huge chunks of the air of the of the country that don't do not work. Yeah, because it's like you, you don't want to force something to, to work in this asset class because it's very particular. So it becomes one of those that starts to funnel into these certain areas that are really good to do this. And it becomes a, this is very viable. You know, I mean, I mean, I've talked to agents who are like, yeah, the whole Airbnb thing, I think it's saturated and I just don't know. And it's like, well, maybe where you're at in yeah. XYZ metro area, it might be, or regulatory wise, it's concerning mm -hmm. for sure, but this is here to stay. This is going to be a professionalized asset class. And we're still kind of in the, you know, top of the second or third inning as a baseball analogy that mm. we have not fully developed this whole thing yet. Yeah. There's still a lot of uh, opportunity left for sure, especially yeah. when it comes to like how to manage the properties, because I think there's been a huge shift in like just, you know, there being a timeshare industry and there's nothing to do with timeshares with vacation rentals. So let's be perfectly right. clear on that. Yeah. But then, you know, old school property managers that are like, yeah, we'll help you rent your place, but we'll take 40% of what you make. And it's like, 
that's not going to make money if, if we're being honest. So finding ways to, you know, uh, optimize how, when you get something, like what are the yeah. best practices to go and, and, yeah. you know, make this actually work. Yeah. So it's not just about finding the right property and making sure the money works that way. It's about all the things that go into it, including how are you managing it, including like, you know, how are you making sure that in some cases, even if you're maybe a market that is a little bit more seasonal, you can find some midterm rental opportunities in there. I know that has been something that a lot of people in the short-term rental market or the vacation rental market have been able to ebb and flow between, which is very interesting to learn about. So let's talk about Branson first, because I do have a lot of followers here. And I know, of course, we're going to be taking your peeps as well, but what, tell us about the ransom market, why somebody might want to invest in um, a vacation rental there. And then maybe just give us a little teaser about what are some of the other markets that you really see um, your investors looking at along with Branson, just so people are kind of uh, aware of some of these opportunities out there. Well, I picked Branson because it is by far one of the most affordable entry-level markets that you can get started in that has you know, very regular year over year occupancy. We have attractions here. I mean, I can't, I can't explain how many people I've talked to that are not familiar. They're like, Oh, what is this place? So I, I, I made a whole YouTube video. Of like what is Branson? Cause we've got a theme park. We've got, yeah. you know, all, the whole theater industry. In fact, there's more theater seats in Branson than even in Las Vegas. So there's wow. like a whole lit, like a whole bunch of things you can do when you come to Branson. So that's, that's really what kind of the fundamentals are. And then you combine that with the fact that it's in Southwest Missouri, yeah, which is kind of hard to get to, but also our property values are pretty, pretty low. So, I mean, I've got contracts right now for condos that are like $135,000. So it's like, you can go do that. And if you go like find a lender that can do like a second vacation home loan for 10% down, you could literally buy one of these for less than $20,000. Wow. So if you're what like worried about like, return. Ooh, I don't know. I, I don't have a hundred thousand yeah. dollars to go yeah. get something somewhere like a half a mm -hmm. million dollar cabin. Well, you, you know don't have to necessarily do that. Like you can get started in a place like this. Now you're not going to be crazy cash flowing, but just getting that first one going can allow you to leverage it into buying more. It's just right. really, it's an awesome way to, you know, just get one started, get the, get the renters to start paying for it. And, uh, get your processes do down. Just understand what yeah. you're doing, right? Learn. Yeah, it's important because it's not it's not just buying the property. You got to figure out how you're going to market that property, how you're going to manage that property, all the things. Um, and so I think it's just good to get started with one so you can learn those things and then you can transfer those skills to the next one or the next one. Yeah, so and if you mess up with like a million dollar investment, I mean, that <laughs> could be a yeah, pretty big deal. But if, you know, it's a, all right, maybe we're negative cash flow, like $4,000 this year. It's like, it's yeah. not gonna, kill you. But if, if yes. you mess up with a really huge one, like that's going to be a problem so that there's yeah. definitely a, you know, but we also do have larger properties here. So I don't want to say that we only have this like entry level class. I would just say that's like 80, 70, 80% of people I work with are like this hundred to $400,000 condo purchase. We do have a lot of condos here just because it's zoning restriction without getting into the weeds on that. But a lot, the, one of the benefits is like most of them are turnkey. So you can get this thing, you're getting a bed, you know, furniture, you know, silverware in the drawers, plates, wall decor. So it's like, you just go ahead and you buy a business. So it's, it's really neat to do this as a, as a thing to get your, get your feet wet in the short-term rental industry. That's awesome. So besides Branson, uh, well, first of all, if you are looking to start uh, investing in real estate in this way, Bill is your guy. So at the end of this video, stay tuned because you're going to see all of his contact information so you can reach out to him. Um, but I have a lot of people looking to invest. And if you haven't been to Branson, you should go check it out. And then, uh, you know, talk to Bill about some of those opportunities. Besides Branson, what would you say are maybe like the other top markets people might want to consider for short-term rentals just based on your knowledge? Going from East Coast to West Coast, you know, Northeast, um, you can make some some claims that there's some some ski areas in Vermont, New Hampshire areas that they've got some some opportunities. Um, you know, really coastal, really far north, it gets hard because it's very seasonal, like the Jersey Shore area. But I mean, if you've got a property that really has like amazing amenities and you're on top of it with revenue management and pricing it right, and you're really like amazing with customer service. You can make this thing kind of work anywhere, but ultimately like, again, just looking at market trends and, and just general, how many people come here throughout the course of the year, that's kind of a big thing. So like going down the coast, you know, like Myrtle beach and Hilton head, you know, um, all these, uh, all these spots that are, yeah. um, you know, down into Florida. So Florida's crazy. Cause there's a lot of people doing it down there. 
So like Emerald Coast is great. So Dustin 30A, yeah. um, Panama City Beach, like that's a great spot because um, you know, Southern Florida is a little bit seasonal where you get a lot of snowbirds and they've got a lot of 30 day restrictions down there. Mm. Um, also too, like Miami's kind of a big Metro has some rules against it. So, um, coastal Texas, Galveston's great. Mm. Broken Bow, Oklahoma's great. Yeah. Hot Springs, Arkansas, Poconos, Pennsylvania, Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, Smoky Mountains, Tennessee. That's always been the like that's the yeah. place where you go get a cabin. That's where you really go for it and get it. That's a really good investor market. Mm -hmm. um, Phoenix, Arizona is actually kind of surprisingly well. You could do a hybrid rental where you do a short-term rentals in the peak season and then use it as like a midterm rental uh, mm -hmm. in the off season. That's a really good way to offset that kind of slow season, which is the summertime. Because obviously it's like 120, 130 oh, degrees yeah. outside. So it's like, yeah. it's great to do that. Yeah. Um, where you're at, Coeur d'Alene. Coeur d'Alene's good. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, spots in Montana, you know, there's there's a lot of places where this works. So Yeah. But the big thing is if you're going to start and you're brand new to it, look for some of those places that do have affordability because to your point, Bill, when you don't have to put a lot of money down, when your risk isn't going to be as great, you're more likely to actually go do it. You can learn, uh, you know, in that first one. And then it really is a stepping stone. It's like, you know, your first property leads to another, to another, to another. That's why a lot of the investors you work with are calling you up and buying more than one property. You're selling them multiple properties in Branson and you're referring them out to your agent partners across the country in different markets, because once they've leveraged this and they understand the value, and then they can take those properties and leverage equity and whatnot and continue to do it. Uh, why wouldn't they, especially if they have a great agent that is helping them understand that particular market, the cap rate, the opportunity, the challenges, getting them connected with property management companies, making sure that they're thinking about it the right way. And I would say that that is the key. So Bill has spent a lot of time around this industry, which makes him a great uh, agent in this uh, niche, if you will. Um, and I think that that's really important if you're going to be uh, looking with an, looking uh, at working with an agent. So uh, what else do we need to know about you and your business? One other plug too is like, you know, hanging out with people that do this all the time. Yeah. You know, I was green at for some period where it was like, what's a 1031 exchange? And it okay. was like, oh, this is how you, you know, defer yeah. you know, taxes for, for capital gains taxes on when you sell property. And it's like, oh, okay. And then little things like that. And and specifically with vacation rentals, you can do a like cost segregation, which can hmm. you can basically front load your depreciation. And that'll like if you do like what's called material participation. Like, again, these are all like kind of very specific terms. Like you have to look it up yeah. with the IRS, but it's like bottom line, like if you make a lot of money and you pay a lot of taxes, you can go buy yes. a vacation rental, do a cost segregation. Yes. And then the IRS is like, oh, you owe like, you know, 10% of what you would have owed. And it's like, are you kidding me? Like, yes. having seen clients do this. It's like, this. why the, Why are we not like broadcasting? This <laughs> why isn't everybody why do doing this? I know about this. Like this is. <laughs> This is like life changing amount of money you could do because then you get people who are like, yeah, I did this once then I did it again and I did it again. So I bought three properties instead of paying three years worth of mm -hmm. however many dollars to the government. And it's like, okay. this That's is amazing. legal. It's like, oh, it's very legal. Like it's it's happening. Well, obviously they've done this whole change yes. where it's now it's instead of a hundred percent depreciation upload and they're yep. tapering it. But then now it's actually in legislation to maybe, maybe vote on reallowing it again. But regardless, it's like, Hey, Regardless, you're like, going to pay the money to Uncle Sam, or you're going to be able to keep more of your money yeah. and actually go buy a property. And yeah, I, I agree. I mean, we do these trainings all the time. And I'm like, you know, as a real estate professional to be sharing this out there with everybody, you know, um, but you have to understand it first. And so that's what you've done is you're educating yourself, uh, you're doing it. And then that way you can go out there and you can share it with everybody, you know, and help them build wealth in real estate and um, make their money work for them as well. So I think that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'm practicing what I preach too, because it's like I, everybody I work with, it's like, I treat them like, is it they're a family or friend? I don't want to yeah. lead anyone into doing this just to get a transaction done by great. any means. Like there's nothing but like, I want to help people find success here. You should be getting excited. This should be something that's like fun and that like allows you to get a win. And yeah. that's like one of the best feelings is when someone it's like, oh yeah, you know, we got this thing. And oh, by the way, made a hundred thousand dollars with it. And like, you paid like, like not even $400,000 and you, you just did that in a year. Like, that's incredible. Like, yes. Like, yay. And you got to congrats. have congrats. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's the cool thing about, um, I think the people that I get to work with is that they have passion for what they do. They, uh, they're learning based. They, they, they practice what they preach. They, they learn, they share, they come from a place of, uh, wanting to help people, uh, you know, 
I think people that are aligned uh, find each other. And um, I'm really grateful that I get to work with Bill. Bill and I spend quite a bit of time together throughout the week. We're um, building things together, having fun. And so if you are in and around the uh, Branson, Missouri area, um, and or you also might want to talk about uh, buying investment properties, even if not in Branson, um, but you just like what you heard from Bill, because you can tell he knows what the heck he's talking about, uh, go ahead and reach out to him or reach out to me and I'll connect you. But all of Bill's information is going to be at the end of the video. Thanks for spending time with me, Bill. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, Carrie. I will say too, that probably Kansas City, St. Louis, mm -hmm. Tulsa, those are the main metros that are yes. close to here. I've never sold a vacation rental to someone that lives here <laughs> ever. Because right. like everyone... Yeah lives in Florida, yeah. Illinois, Colorado, California, you name it. So yep. you do not yeah. have to be here. This is one of no, those No, in fact, you probably won't be here because then you can go visit there exactly. and make that a great place for you to buy your first uh, investment property. I love it. Thanks, Bill. Thank you, Carrie.